Hello everyone. Welcome to Embertronics. I hope you are all doing great. Some time back, we have published the custom bootloader development tutorial series. In that series, we have used STM32F7 which is based on the ARM Cortex M7. That STM32F7-67ZI has 2MB of flash. In that microcontroller, we have developed the custom bootloader from scratch. On top of that, we have added many features like multiple slots, OTA update through Bluetooth, firmware update using the SD card, etc. If you are working on the ARM Cortex M7, you can go and watch the tutorial series. Okay, let's come to the point. We have been getting requests from the users to provide the bootloader tutorial for the STM32 that has less flash memory. So, we have decided to go with the STM32 F103CA-T6 blue pill. The price of this microcontroller board is very less and anyone can easily buy it. In this series, we are not going to discuss what is bootloader, why we need a bootloader, memory alias, etc. Already we have explained those concepts in this bootloader part 1. Please watch this video from the start to 7 minutes so that you will get an idea about the bootloader. Without wasting the time, directly we will move to the topic. Check the dataset of this microcontroller. This is a 32-bit microcontroller and it is based on the ARM Cortex M3 CPU. It supports maximum of 72 MHz clock frequency. It has 64 KB or 128 KB flash memory. We are using the 64 KB variant. SRAM size is 20 KB. Let's move to the peripherals. It has 2 I2C, 3 user, 2 SPI, CAN interface and USB 2.0. Check the memory map of this microcontroller. Our code is going to sit in this flash memory. This is a system memory where manufacturer system bootloader sits. The size of the flash memory is just 64 KB. The application and bootloader that we are going to write will sit in this flash memory. Now we will see the boot modes of this STM32 F7 microcontroller. Sorry, F1 microcontroller. It has two boot pins, boot pin 0 and boot pin 1. If the boot pin 0 is connected to the ground, it will boot from the flash memory. If you connect the boot pin 0 to 1 and boot pin 1 to ground, then the controller will boot from the system memory where the system bootloader resides. If you connect both the boot pins to 1, then it will boot from the SRAM. Check this hardware. This is the boot pin 0 and boot pin 1. Right now, both pins are connected to 0, so it will boot from the flash memory. We need to make this boot pin 0 to 1 if we want to use the system bootloader. Whenever we want to flash the bootloader or application, we will use the system bootloader. Now, we will go to the memory, part memory partition. This is the flash memory of the STM32F103CA-T6. The size is 64 KB. We are going to divide this flash memory into multiple sections. We are allocating 16 KB for the bootloader. 1 KB is reserved for our future use. 47 KB for the application. What if our application size is more than 47 KB? In that situation, we cannot do anything. We will have to change the controller with more flash or connect the external flash memory. In this video, we are going to create a bootloader project and write that bootloader to this area. After that, we will create an application and write that application bin file to this area. So, bootloader boots first and call the application. Now, we will create the project. Open the stm 32 cube IDE. Create a new STM32 project for the bootloader. Enter the controller name and select that. Give the project name and select the location. I am going to create the new directory for bootloader.
Now, it will create the project and add the required files for us. In this blue pill board, the user LED is connected to the PC13. So, we will have to enable this PC13 as a GPIO output. For the debug prints, we are going to use the usart1. Set the, set the PA9 as usart1tx and PA10 as usartrx. Now, enable the usart1 by clicking, clicking connectivity, usart1 and mode as asynchronous. Save this file and it will generate the code for us. See, GPIO and user to one initialize functions have been created. Whenever you are adding the code to this file, make sure to add it between the user code begin and user code end so that it won't be removed when you regenerate the code. In this project, we are going to use the usart1 for debug prints. To make the life easier, we are going to create a printf-like function for debugging prints. Include the required header files. Then use this code after the user code begin for. Whenever we call printf, it will call this function and that transmits the data to the UART1. Create a variable to track the version of the bootloader. After the user initialization, we will print the bootloader version. Then write the code to toggle the user LED for 20 times with the 100, 100 millisecond delay. Toggle the port C 13th pin. After that, we are going to call our application. Add the function prototype here. We will create the function definition after the printf function. Create the function pointer and store the application's recent handler address in that function pointer. If you want to know about the function pointer, we have provided the link below in the description. You can check it out. See, the bootloader will start from here and the application start from 0x 08004400. At that address, main stack pointer will be there. After that, which is 0x08004400 plus fourth memory, the reset handler's address will be stored. If you want to know more about the vector table and its placement, please check our bootloader part 1 video. We have discussed this there already. Now we can directly call the application's reset handler using this function pointer.
the bootloader code is mostly ready. Only we have to modify the flash size in the linker script. Open the linker script and change the flash length to 16 KB. Build this. We have got an error. I is not declared. Declare that. Just rebuild it. If you see the flash memory, we have used around 10 KB and only 5 KB is free. When we build this, the bin file is not generated. We will modify the settings to generate the bin file. Go to the project properties. C, C++ build, settings, MCU post build outputs. Enable the convert to binary file option. Rebuild it again and the binary file is generated. That's all. Now we will create the application. Create the new STM32 project for the application. Create the new directory for, for the application. Then create the project. Like a bootloader, we enable PC13 and user1. We have opened two projects in the same workspace. That's why you are seeing two main.c files. So don't get confused. Add the printf function. Add the variable to hold the application version. Print the application version at the start. Wait for a second. In the bootloader, we have added this for loop out of the user code begin, so it will be deleted when we regenerate the code. We will move that code between the user code begin and user code end. Ok, let's come back to the application. Here we are going to toggle the user LED for every one second. In the bootloader, the LED blinks in every 100 millisecond. Here it is 1 second. So that we can differentiate the bootloader and application. Yes, of course, we can use the debug print as well. Now we will modify the linker script. Application is starting from 0x08 0044400 and the length is 47 KB. As the vector table address is going to be different one, we have to inform the controller to use the new vector table instead of the bootloader's vector table. The application vector table is placed at 0x08 0044400. Go to core source system stm32 to f1xx.c. In this file, uncomment this user vect tab address. Change the offset to 0x4400. 
enable the convert the output to bin file option now build the application the application dot bin has been generated see here 36 kb is free and 10 kb is used let's recap we have created two projects and their binary files are bootloader dot bin and application dot bin we can flash these bin files to the controllers to flash this we need to connect the usb to serial converter to the stm32 board check this connection the power supply and ground are connected to the respective pins the tx pin of the usb to serial converter is connected to the a10 and the rx pin of the usb to serial converter is connected to the a9 you can use this usb to serial cable as well now we can flash the bootloader and application before that connect the boot pin 0 to 1 press the reset button open the stm32 cube programmer select the uart mode as we are going to access the stm32 using uart1 select the proper com port and connect we can also use the st link v2 programmer for flashing in that case we don't need to modify the boot boot pin we will use that sta link v2 programmer in our next tutorial see it has some previous programs in the flash let's erase the entire flash memory the flash has been erased flash the application first select the application dot bin file and give the application start address 0x0800440000 select the verify programming and click start programming it's done read the application area and check it see the application dot bin has been written to this area read the bootloader area it is empty we will flash the bootloader change the address and start programming we can read back the memory we have flashed the bootloader bin also disconnect this change the boot pin 0 to connect with 0 open the serial terminal we are using terra term press the reset button see the bootloader has started and jumps to the application you can check the led it will blink fastly when the bootloader runs and blinks every 1 second when the application runs now the bootloader is starting and it is giving control to the application we hope you have learned something new today in our next video we will see how to update the application please follow us if you like our content thank you see you in our next video